Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to our LPSC 2016 live Q&A with Dr. Stephen Mackwell. Uh, my name is Andy Shaner. I'm here at the Lunar and Planetary Institute. And of course, with me is Dr. Mackwell today to answer questions that you've been submitting uh, about LPSC. I uh, will address some of the questions that have come ahead of time and we'll address them as they come live as well. So if you're out there watching us, welcome. And if you've got a question, uh, use Twitter and use the hashtag LPSC2016. And we will show that when it comes up. So we've got quite a few questions that came in, so let's just, let's just get started. Sure. Um, so there's been a, some concern about the conference venue. And so LPSC has been, and it is currently and has been always in Houston, for yep. obvious reasons, connections to LPI and uh, JSC. Um, are there other reasons that it's here in Houston? Yeah, uh, we actually, the last time we seriously looked around for a venue for the, um, for the LPSC meeting, uh, we didn't restrict ourselves to Houston. Um, we had outgrown the facility down in, um, on the other side of the lake here, down in, uh, in Clear Lake, and we needed to find a new venue. And we looked around, we looked, uh, we stuck mostly with the south because we like uh, working in the March time frame. And we were looking uh, places in Orlando, we looked in Austin, we looked in San Antonio, um, we really kind of reached out to a lot of places and far and above the Woodlands came in as the least expensive venue when you look at the integrated costs for the participants. And so, you know, we're always got our eye on the bottom line. We want to be a meeting that uh, young people in particular and students uh, can and afford to attend, uh, to participate and interact. And uh, so we're very, very conscious of the costs. So cost was the main driver. And I would add that um, that this isn't something we just do once and then stop. We actually continuously uh, review what our options are for other venues as well. So yes, recently we have been looking at other possibilities uh, for venues and uh, we still are pretty much running as inexpensively as we can for, our, um, for the, the folks in the universities to participate. Okay. Is there any concern right now that uh, the woodlands is outgrown or could be outgrown in the next few years? We're, we're pretty good right now. Um, we, the, the Woodlands has uh, five rooms, each holding 500 people. Um, we have been using, uh, a lot of the week we've been using only four of those rooms at this point. We don't seem to have a great need in general for a greater than 500 person um, sessions. And, um, and we still have some room to grow. The poster sessions haven't exceeded the space and we're not too crowded. We're certainly much less crowded than AGU. Uh, with their poster sessions. So at this point, I would say we've got a, a few good years left in the woodlands, should we you know, choose to stay there. Great. Um, another conversation that's been taking place, uh, we've noticed on social media, is that related to childcare and LPSC? Mm. Is, oh, yes. is, is this something that LPI can assist with? Oh yeah, uh, in fact, this is something that we've been concerned about for many, many years. And, uh, and we're continuously looking at options to be able to provide people with, um, with options for childcare. Um, there are several different ways we can do that. One is uh, we can reach out and look at, um, at childcare facilities that are local to in the Woodlands area that are easy access for people. And we routinely do that with the meetings. Um, in the past, um, we've, we've come up with lists of available venues. At times, uh, those childcare facilities have not been particularly interested in taking uh, the number of additional children because they're routinely, you know, looking after their normal clientele. And so we've had years where they show very little interest in uh, supporting us. We do still uh, check on what available um, childcare cap um, capabilities in the area. Um, and we provide those to people as they need them. And frequently we, we post that information on our web pages, or usually we do, um, when it's available. The, um, the local convention bureau has been helping us with this recently. And uh, the current plan is that we will um, utilize their resources and, uh, and they will um, provide uh, a listing of facilities in the near area that would enable people to reach out and try and um, locate a place that suits their needs. Um, the other possibility that we have looked at quite seriously uh, is to do an in-house um, scenario where a childcare service comes um, and resident in the meeting hotel and sets up shop and looks after you know groups of, um, of, of children of participants. The uh, the LPSC is not like the AGU meetings though. 
the AGU meetings uh, have that kind of capability, but they're also 10 times the size of the LPSC. Uh, when we have looked into um, in-house in childcare, uh, the costs are prohibitive. Well, I would say they're prohibitive. They, they're up around $10,000 just to get in the door. Wow. Uh, on top of that, um, then uh, there are additional costs associated with if their childcare folks uh, take the kids out for walks or, or take them outside of the, um, the immediate rooms. There's also costs associated with the rental of the rooms that, the, um, that this would take place in. So by the time it's all gone and done, what we're looking at is a cost in the ten to $20,000 range. Um, obviously, parents aren't going to be prepared to pay that to have their kids at a meeting. If we distributed that cost, it would be an additional ten to twenty dollars um, per person. I'm, I imagine um, would end up in the registration fees. And for that kind of additional cost, we're always trying to keep our registration costs as low as possible. And um, and we are concerned that that would be an additional burden on the attendees. Coupled with that, um, we really, although there's been a lot of talk about this, um, nobody's been able to give us any numbers on the sorts of numbers of children that we would be required to look at to, to, to help. Um, we hear a lot of noise, but we haven't actually seen anybody come up and poll the community to say whether this is five kids, 10 kids, 20 kids. Um, when we look around the meetings, we don't see very many children. Now that may just be because they're not there, but at the same time, um, it would be very useful for us if the parents uh, who are you know, talking about this got involved came up with sort of the sorts of numbers, the, the children that we would need to be you know, considering here. So we'd at least have a point of departure that we could work from and try to figure out the best options. But you know, this is clearly something we're very concerned about. We'll do what we can to support it. Um, and, um, and mostly what I would say is if people are concerned about this, work with us. We will do the best we can to help in any way we can what we would like is the parents to, um, who are, who are the people who are concerned about this, to take some of the responsibility on in terms of connecting with other parents. We will help with that. Uh, we're more than happy to put connections on our website so that parents can get involved, talk to each other, figure out what the real needs are, and come back to us with a with a with a proposition. Um, we're more than willing to help wherever we can. Um, one other thing that I would note, um, and maybe people don't realize this, but I, I think most people do, and that is that we actually do have a room, uh, a parent room, um, where the uh, parents with children can go um, and sit quietly. It's a private space um, on, the, on the, the meeting space floor that's available to parents to go with their kids. And, um, and that's available throughout the week. So we do actually provide resources, and we would provide more within the limits of our financial capabilities um, if we had a clear indication that there was a groundswell of interest in that. Well, and, and it's great that this conversation has already started on social media, so if we just keep that going. Oh, yeah, and we, 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 watch, we watch the social media. Uh, we keep an eye on it. We know exactly what people are talking about out there. Um, and, and all I would say is to people who are concerned, who are complaining about what we're not providing, is um, Propose solutions. Um, give us the information that we need to be able to make you know, valid decisions that don't unnecessarily tax um, the meeting attendees. Um, the last thing I would ever want to do is to, um, to book somebody into the facility, uh, to uh, set up a childcare facility, and, um, and pay 10, 15, plus thousand dollars, um, and only have one or two children actually make use of the facility. Okay, well, great. Um, another question, uh, some concerns about the cost of the, the rate at the Waterway Marriott, oh, yeah. the, 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 night, the rate per night, yep. and that seems to have gone up again this year. C can you comment on that? Um, yes, the hotel is, um, uh, has a rate. It's, it's, uh, certainly we have many other options in the environment which are cheaper than the Marriott Hotel. Uh, the Marriott does provide um, nice rooms. It's a nice facility. It's the meeting hotel. Um, in general, um, I would say that that doesn't seem to be a problem for most people. The hotel is booked out literally uh, within hours of the room block opening. That tells me that 
people are more than happy to pay additional uh, what the additional costs are to stay there. And it is a nice hotel, um, but there are plenty of nice hotels in the area that come at a significantly reduced cost and are easily available to participants. Many, uh, some of those hotels you can walk from to get to the meeting. Others, we provide a shuttle service so that people can get there. Um, and uh, there are many other options in the area. And we have an extensive list of hotels that are provided. And we have room blocks with many of those. Uh, the hotels up there have been very, very good at giving reduced rates to us uh, to support this meeting. Is there a, um, or I should ask, do you think the amount of rooms that we get in that block is, is reasonable? <laughs> um, we basically clean out the hotel. Do, OK. Um, yeah, we, uh, it, it, it's not. The hotel itself was, was originally, when it was originally built, was really set up as a convention center um, with much more meeting space capability than numbers of sleeping rooms. And so um, the number of sleeping rooms in the hotel is not huge, but we fill the whole lot pretty much. The, the hotel reserves only a few rooms for its elite customers, and, uh, and even those end up going because we do have um, folks who actually occupy those rooms too. The hotel does get, those last rooms do get expensive, uh, much more than our room block, um, but that's because the hotel is holding them back for, um, for their preferred customers. Okay. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, welcome to our uh, LPSC 2016 live Q&A with Dr. Stephen Mackwell. Uh, if you have a question for us, please feel free to uh, ask us that through Twitter using the hashtag LPSC2016. Uh, and we will be sure to, to pass that along when we see it. Um, so the LPC registration fee increased this year. Can, yes. you, can you tell us about that? Well, why sure. is it increased? And what, what, what goes into de de um, deciding that cost? Um, the, the LPSC meeting um, is, uh, has been increasingly um, supported from registration fees. Uh, and that's purely a reflection of uh, what NASA allows us to, um, to spend on meetings. Uh, the, there, there are a number of, uh, number of kind of ways in which you can figure out exactly what it is that you can and cannot do with a meeting. Uh, for example, um, audiovisual, we uh, cannot be directly charged to the LPI cooperative agreement, for example, the funding for the LPI. Um, the, the shuttle bus cannot be charged there. There are uh, many other items associated with the meeting. Clearly, food and beverages can't be charged to, the, uh, to, to uh, any NASA money. And so what we do is we try and minimize um, the costs for the meeting. Um, and we use uh, our NASA funding where it's legitimate and allowed uh, to offset any costs. But in the past several years, the NASA um, contribution to the meeting has uh, decreased um, steadily. And so, um, you know, basically, we're a USRA, which operates the uh, LPI for NASA, um, is a nonprofit organization. We, what we use the money we collect in registration to pay for the meeting. It's a zero sum game, and you get what you pay for. Um, and that is the way we approach the LPSC. Um, we like to provide a meeting that is good for all the participants, that has enough coffee, that has enough things, social uh, kind of events, so that people can do what they need to do at meetings. We want people to take advantage of the opportunity to meet with their colleagues, uh, to socialize with their colleagues. We want young people to be able to talk to the senior colleagues in their fields. So we want to have social kind of environments where they can do that. And those events, uh, wherever possible, are covered by, um, by the registration fee. And um, we solicit input from the community at every meeting to see what they like and what they don't like. And we try as best we can to provide everything that we can to the community within the bounds of not increasing the registration fee significantly. Um, our registration fee is actually quite low, much lower than DPS, much lower than AGU. And, um, and we feel we provide some of the best value for money that you can get. And our student rate is very, very low for a meeting of this size and with the sorts of things that we provide. Yes, 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 it, it really is. Um, now switch gears a little bit, and let's talk about the um, uh, more of the program part, the scientific mm -hmm. part of the conference. How can somebody become a member of the program committee? Is, is there a nomination process? How does that work? Um, 
the, 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 there is a way that people can become involved. Every year we, uh, we have people write to us, email us, um, saying they would like to be part of the meeting, part of the program committee. We, um, the, 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 the committee itself um, meets here at the LPI for about three days in January. Um, the, 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 the date's fairly set. Um, we reach out in the November kind of time frame to people to participate in that. Uh, we try and keep um, our coverage for as, as to cover all the bases that we need. We need a certain number of people who specialize in Mars, a certain number of people who specialize in the moon, um, astrobiologists, impacts people. We need people covering the full spectrum. Uh, but most of the time, for some of the smaller areas, it's just one person, maybe two people. We try and keep that number relatively, the total number relatively modest uh, without overworking the, the program committee because you know the, the, the costs do go up and we try and minimize the costs um, to the community and to NASA. And, um, and we do take people's volunteering very, very seriously when we, when we look to fill that, that group. Um, the, the main thing is that, uh, that we want to get the best people possible to be able to put the best program forward and if people want to participate, they just need to contact us and, um, or contact me. And, um, and we will pass their names along. And if we have a, a place we can use them, we certainly will. We like having new young people involved or even older people involved. Because um, our, our main aim here is to put together the best program possible. And, uh, and I think we do that pretty, pretty well. Um, the people we have participating do exceptionally well at putting the program together. And it's an interesting process. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been on it a few times for the education abstracts. So mm -hmm. if, if you do get a chance to be on it, it's really fascinating and a really fun experience. Um, what suggestions would you, speaking of young people, young scientists, what suggestions would you give to a, um, a first time presenter or an attendee? Maybe, maybe some advice. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's always dangerous to ask me that. Um, uh, as I said, the LPSC is really a premier meeting for uh, young people to be able to come and interact with colleagues of all ages, including senior colleagues. And for a first time attendee, um, my suggestion would be to make use of the opportunity to, uh, to network and to start to build a network. You know, the LPSC meeting is, a, to me, it's, it's a very unique meeting. For its size, it feels remarkably like a family kind of meeting. It's very, very friendly. People are very open. Uh, you, lots of interactions, of, uh, you know, there. Um, the social events like the poster sessions, the, um, uh, the, the various mixes that we have are a unique opportunity for young people to go and approach uh, their senior colleagues. You know, it's a way to look for opportunities, PhDs, postdocs, uh, faculty positions and things like that. Make use of it. Um, when you do that, my suggestion would be um, that you present yourself in the best light. And that usually means, you know, um, dress appropriately, um, approach the situation seriously, um, talk, to, talk about your science, talk about what you're doing, um, and you'll find that people are very receptive to that. Make use of the poster sessions, go around. If you know that, um, that there are colleagues that you want to interact with and work with, look up where their posters are, go talk to them about their science, talk to them about your science, and, and, and take that forward. Um, there's great opportunities for young people to interact here. And, and I would add that if you are a first time presenter, a young scientist, whether you're undergraduate, graduate student, or postdoc, um, your first time presenting LPSC, if you're a little nervous about it, we're having an event on uh, Sunday afternoon uh, there at the uh, Woodlands Water Waterway Marriott uh, in the Panther Creek Room, I believe. Uh, and it's a chance for you to come present. We'll have other, you know, your peers or people who are in the same situation that will have a chance to present your research, either your poster or an oral session if you have it, to a panel of seasoned presenters. And they can give you feedback in a little more, I don't want to say friendly, but a more friendly environment uh, before you give the, your, your presentation during the regular meeting. So from one to five, any more questions about that, you can go to the education and engagement page on the LPSC website and find a link to register, or you can contact me if you have more questions. Um, we have, so we have a question that's come through. Uh, can I, before, before you do that, um, let me just follow up on your comment, because I think it's an excellent one. Um, you know, whether, whether, whether people like it or not, they are judged by the quality of their presentations. And um, 
And there's a reason why you'll find on the web plenty of examples of the lousiest presentation ever given, the worst poster ever given. It's because they're, 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 they're rampant out there. And, uh, and people make many, many mistakes in preparing uh, posters and, and presentations. Um, usually they go overboard in various ways uh, because you, know, you really, really want to get it all out there. And so what I would encourage young people who are first presenters to do is take advantage of the opportunity you just talked about. But in when, before they even get to that, go out there, have a look. There are some great materials available on the web to help you in preparing yourself and getting, making the, the, the points you need to make with your presentation uh, cleanly, clearly, and being able to have an impact that, that reaches out beyond uh, just the meeting. That's a good point. Okay, so our, our question we've got has come in. Uh, is asking, can we provide some more information about the Tuesday evening public lecture uh, during LPSD? Oh, yes. Would you like to do that one? or? Eh. Um, <laughs> yes, there is a public lecture um, on Tuesday evening. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's in the evening. Alan Stern, um, the, the PI from the uh, New Horizons mission, is going to come and give a public lecture about um, about obviously the New Horizons flyby of Pluto and the fascinating science that's come from that mission. Um, it's really uh, going to be a presentation that specifically um, reaches into the, the broader community. So, you know, we've asked, we've, we've reached out to local schools and various other, you know, participants to come and participate. Now, as people have probably figured out, this is the same timing, pretty close to when we're having a poster session. Um, we anticipate that, that many of the scientists who are interested in New Horizons will participate in the uh, special session on Monday afternoon, and then there's a second part to that on Tuesday, um, and may have already seen most of the science that, that interests them at there. They're more than welcome to come to the public lecture um, as well, if they're interested in seeing Alan present. Um, but um, but really, this is geared towards uh, a public forum. The, the public, when they participate, there'll be an opportunity to talk to Alan afterwards. There'll be a QA. and a uh, There'll be an opportunity. Alan will stick around afterwards and uh, happily to talk to people. So I think it'd be a great opportunity. Alan's a great presenter. I think it's going to be a, a great presentation. So if you're interested in attending, if you can, uh, it's at 7.30. It'll be in uh, Waterway Ballroom 4, so upstairs at 7.30. Um, LPSC abstracts. Um, they are two pages. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't believe that's a requirement, but there is the room for two pages, which is longer than many other conferences. Yeah. You, why? Well, you're right. And they're always two pages. We've had ones that are like a <laughs> short paragraph sometimes. Um, the reason the reason for the two pages is that um, we've always felt that for the LPSC meeting, we want to do the best meeting possible. And we want to be able to enable the participants to figure out where they want to be, what talks they're really interested in, and so on. So we, we like to have an abstract which has enough information, which has the opportunity to have a graphic um, element to it as well, so that people can plan their, their activities at the meeting. We specifically designed the program so people can, if they want to, hop between sessions and hear the talks they want to. So they really need to understand what a talk's going to be about. And the abstract provides that opportunity. The other thing that the abstracts do in this extended form is they allow us, when we put the program together, to put the best program forward possible because we know exactly what the people are going to come and talk about because the abstracts are sufficiently detailed. Plus, we, we archive the abstracts on the web for future generations to be able to go back and see the great science that's going on in the planetary science community, you know, three years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago. Um, and those abstracts are much more meaningful than going back and looking at um, short, you know, clip art type abstracts that you find with other meetings. Sure. Okay. Um, for, and more, more for young scientists, um, has there been a, attempts, there actually there has been some attempts in the past to have like a, a young scientist meeting yeah. or a career center. And we've, we've done it the past four or five years with our undergraduate research conference, right. but maybe something more, more broad and more general. What kind of efforts have maybe been tried or, or are we thinking of doing? Um, NASA, uh, frequently, I think Kurt Niebuhr has come down and, and, and made presentations from the NASA perspective, um, trying to provide input to young people about how best to, to work with proposing and how best to work within the community. So we, um, we certainly um, 
have some activities at the meeting that are specifically geared towards young people. To some, to some extent, um, you know, my feeling about that is that I want the young people to mostly to just be part of the larger group and to participate in those. I don't want to, uh, I understand that the need for, for people to, you know, um, or wish for people to, you know, talk about their issues personally uh, with their peer group. Uh, but I do think that, there, uh, that, that the main thing for the young people is to interact more broadly with the larger community, such as at the poster sessions, the social events, and so on. So I'm more than happy, you know, people want to do um, other events associated with the meeting. We have lots of peripheral meeting opportunities. Um, so, you know, if people want to do additional things, they should contact us, and we're more than happy to entertain that. Great. Yeah, happy to help. Um, this was an, an interesting question that came in. It was kind of proposed in a scenario of something that happened to them where they had uh, submitted a paper, mm -hmm. and they wound up running into one of the reviewers oh. at LPSC, mm -hmm. um, and I guess that paper came up. Yeah. They, so their question was, if this were to happen to somebody, is it a good idea to pursue that conversation? That depends. <laughs> It depends on um, it depends on the, the how how that is approached. It depends on the personality of the people involved. You know, um, if you know that somebody was a reviewer on a paper and had comments on that paper, um, you're perfectly free to approach that person and talk to them. Um, it's usually safer not to take an accusatory tone, and um, and you know the people can be a little defensive so i would say if you're going to if if you want input you should be free to talk to people and get input you might want to not necessarily couch it in terms of specific comments that were made or specific to the paper you might want to approach it a little more broadly um, and talk about um, this person's perspective on your research more generally so there are, there are ways to do this it depends on the people involved but um, i would encourage any interaction between colleagues okay and we have just a few more minutes uh, in our time here today. So if you've got any questions you're thinking of, uh, please feel free to uh, submit those through Twitter using the hashtag LPSC2016. Hopefully we can get to it in the next few minutes. Um, NASA night, Monday mm -hmm. night, an annual thing. Yep. Um, it will, what can we expect to hear that evening? Um, at the moment, uh, the plan is that Jim Green um, from NASA headquarters, the Division Director of Planetary Sciences, and Jonathan Roll, who's in charge of the RNA, are both going to present at that. Um, we will, I'm sure, get Jim's presentation on the state of planetary sciences. Uh, he will address issues, I'm sure, um, some of the burning issues of the day. The budget, obviously, is going to come up, and, uh, and certainly the, the New Frontiers um, call, which is going to come out um, beginning of next year um, is going to be an issue that people raise. I think um, on Tuesday at lunchtime there is going to, the Planetary Society is going to have a, a town hall um, to basically digest and uh, allow the community to talk broadly within, in, in amongst themselves about, um, about NASA night and what came out at NASA night and any other issues the community have. Um, but you know, the, the, the folks from NASA certainly are very, very good at taking questions from the, 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 the larger group and usually stick around after the question time and take, uh, discuss things with people individually. So if people want to talk to Jim and Jonathan at the end of NASA night, should feel free to approach them. They're very approachable people. And we, uh, we'll take one more here, actually, <coughs> a question that came in from somebody with the, in the press, the media. Uh, they're a member of the press, but they will not be able to attend in person. And was wondering, um, then they'll view the press conference broadcast. Right. And, but is there a way they can ask a question during that press briefing? Uh, yes, um, we believe that there are probably ways that we can do that. Um, there may be a way of, um, of you know, the, 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 the press conferences themselves, we, we are live streaming. Well, we are, uh, a company called Livestream is taping them. Um, and the Monday, um, press conference is going to, I think, be, uh, be broadcast live. The Tuesday press conference for series is not going to be broadcast live. Um, there, if, if anybody in the press who can't be there um, can contact us, we're more than happy to try and work out options so that they can present a question and have it answered at the time. Uh, it may not be that easy to do it um, through a phone line, but we can certainly uh, read the question and, and get a response to that. Great. All right, well, we are out of time. So I want to thank you, Dr. Maxwell, for your time today to answer our questions. Uh, 
any questions we may not have gotten to, or if you even have questions even after today, please don't let it, don't let it end. Please feel free to submit questions using the hashtag LPSC2016, and we will answer those questions. If we didn't get to a question today, we will supply the answer to you uh, when we get done here. Um, so thank you for attending again, and we will see you all in a few weeks in the Woodlands.